But this is the fun part, or I guess the scary part, because we're gonna plug it in and make sure it works, so. Yo, what's up guys? It's DJ Rick Webb. Welcome back to the channel and boy do I have a fun project for you guys in store. We're gonna be taking our normal trust totem here or just a piece of trust in general and we're gonna be putting power into the truss. One of the most annoying things with doing totems is running power cords up and down to plug in your movers, your wash FX2s, whatever lights you have up here, and then plug in lights down here. You gotta link them together or run more extension cords. It's really annoying. And I basically have a dope solution for you guys right here. So this is the finished product. We're gonna be doing this one today, so I'll walk you through how we do it. But basically, it is electrical conduit. We have a four box jumper up top here, all mounted in secured and then it runs down we have an additional two box jumper in the middle and then on the bottom we have another four box jumper with a 10 foot power cable attached to it so you just take that power cable plug it into your power source and then you have a total of 10 outlets on your truss to be able to power everything and if you're not using this like a totem like say the trussing up there you would have outlets running all the way down it to power any lights that you may be hanging off of it and then to join two pieces of truss you basically just take that extension cord and plug it into the outlet of the next truss beside it and then it all powers together. Yo, it's Ricky from the future because this is round two of filming this video. So the first time I filmed this, I pretty much did the whole project based on my knowledge of how to do electrical, which was um, quickly pointed out by electricians to be incorrect. Nonetheless, I took the video down, went back to the drawing board, did some more research, contacted an electrician in my area, and basically figured out how to do this properly and up to code. And now I am refilming the video to basically show you guys how to put electrical outlets in your guys' trust, but this time doing it exactly up to code. Now, in saying that, uh, I have found out, especially from talking to an electrician, that electricians don't really agree with each other on how to properly do electrical up to code. A lot of times they differ on opinions. So even with me showing you guys how to do this up to code, I'm sure electricians are gonna be commenting down below on the smallest little things that could have been done a certain way better than the other way. Kind of similar to how DJs like to point out just about any little thing that they think should have been done this way or that way. It's very common. Apparently electricians do the same thing. But with that said, I am in no means an electrician, nor should you trust my advice because I am not an actual electrician. I will be showing you guys what I know will basically be up to code based on what electricians and what my research has told me. Also, if you don't want to actually do this, you don't feel comfortable doing this, I 100% um, would suggest that you contact an electrician to either one, show you how to do it properly, give you some advice, kind of similar to what I did, or two, any electrician could actually do this project for you. Um, you could either just show them basically this video and basically like this is what I want to be done, or just tell them basically, hey, I want two, I want two quad boxes and I want a single box in between with an outlet on it. Um, and I'm sure they can figure it out and uh, do it for you as well. But anyways, let's uh, jump into everything that you're gonna need to do this properly. All right, so starting off, let's talk about the conduit. So we're running half inch conduit for everything. That is what this pipe is right here. This is half inch conduit. This this is a 10 foot section. Um, that's basically the easiest way to buy it at the hardware store. But uh, per totem, you're only gonna need 57 inches of half inch conduit. We're gonna cut it into two pieces of 28 and a half inches. So if you wanted to do basically two totems, go ahead, just buy yourself a 10 foot section and it'll cover you for both totems. That also goes without saying that everything I'm showing you here on the table is to do one of the totems, not two. Basically, I've already done one, so this is everything that you're gonna need to do one totem. Next thing you're gonna need is five outlets. I got five white ones right here ready to go. Those are going to go into our boxes right here. We have two double boxes, which will be quad outlets and one single box, which will be a double outlet. And the covers for those are down here. This is our quad cover, our other quad cover, and then our dual cover right there. Connecting the pipe to the actual box itself, we have four of the half inch offset connectors right here. It gives the pipe an offset, pretty straightforward. Connecting our pipe to our boxes down here, we have four of the half inch offset connectors right here. Next to our offset connectors here, we have one cable connector that's gonna be used for our cable right here. I'll get to that in a second. We have five hose clamps 
These are three inches that are gonna be used to secure the boxes and the pipe to the trussing. We have three red wire nuts here for our grounds. We have three ground screws to go inside of our boxes. And then up here is what we're gonna be using to connect the boxes to the clamps, which will then go in the truss. We have three of these right here. These are half inch by three inch long, six hole metal plates. You can find these at a hardware store, pretty easy to find. And then beside it, we have three eighth inch uh, machine screws. These are number eight machine screws. And basically we're going to be using that to connect the boxes to the hose clamps. I'll show you guys how we do that here in a little bit. Moving over to the wire section right here. I have a lot of wire. You don't actually need this much. Basically I bought 40 feet of it to be able to do uh, both of my totems as well as the two pieces of truss that are up there. So that's why I got so much wire. This right here is THHN wire. Basically it's your three connectors, your hot, your neutral, and your ground or the white, black, and green wires. This is 12 gauge. You're going to need eight feet per totem. So basically go to the hardware store, buy yourself 16 feet if you're going to do two totems or by eight feet if you're going to need one totem other piece of cable that you're going to need is this right here which is an appliance cable this is a 14 gauge appliance cable 10 foot long basically it's got your outlet plug on one end and then i already ripped this to kind of show you but uh, on the other end you have your three connectors your neutral ground and your hot wire or your black green and white and this right here is actually an optional thing you can either do this or power con now for me i chose to go the hardwired route right here instead of putting like a power con port on here with a power con plug mainly because power con is so expensive for me to be able to basically put a power con port on this and then get like a 10 foot power con cable that basically be the same as this that's going to run me about 40 to 50 dollars to do that versus this right here cost me 10 bucks to buy this so one it's cheaper to go this route and two i don't actually have a lot of power con stuff and i personally don't really see the benefit in using power con for this application just because that's one extra thing i have to plug in so i would rather not use power con for that reason in fact i actually only have i think five things that actually use power con uh both of my vrx subs back there use power con my audio rack uses power con my ceremony rack uses power con and my um, my SZ case uses PowerCon. So those are the only things I really have that use PowerCon. So those are the only things that I have that actually use PowerCon and basically all my lights and everything else is all IEC. So personally, in my opinion, I'd rather stick with IEC because they're a lot cheaper than PowerCon and they're less prone to break too. But anyways, that's just a personal opinion. You can do it however you want. All right, now let me cut back to the old video to show you all the tools that we're gonna be using. Now, moving on from the material side, we need to know what tools we're gonna need to actually do this project. So I have the tools on the table rack. But anyways, the tools that you're going to need. First off, you're gonna need a tape measure so that way you can measure out how much of the conduit you need to cut. You're gonna need wire strippers, a straight screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, Neo nose pliers, regular pliers, wire cutters, utility knife, scissors, possibly, a file so that way you can file down the edges once you cut them on the pipe. Might need a crescent wrench, it's a little bit helpful, you don't necessarily need it. You need a sawzall, this one's a, a powered sawzall, but you can also use a manual saw to cut your conduit. You may need a hammer, may not. Um, it's always nice to have a hammer for persuasion purposes. A uh, sharpie or just something to mark in general on the conduit so you know where you're cutting. Uh, you might need a drill. It makes it a little bit easier to have a drill for some of the things like screwing down the outlets and putting the hose clamps on. It, it's just a little bit easier to use a drill. In my case, you don't necessarily need it. And then lastly, you're going to want an outlet tester. So that way you know that you did your wiring correctly. If anything, make sure you buy one of these, especially if this is your first time doing any sort of electrical projects like this. The first step for me is going to be cutting the conduit to the measurements that I need. And the measurement that I'm going to need is two pieces of 28 and a half inches. So that is what I'm going to be doing now. All 
right, so we went to the past and then we cut our pipe and now we're back in the future with the pipe already cut and ready to go to 28 and a half inches. We got both of them right here. So I'm gonna set you guys up on a high angle view and I'm basically gonna start assembling the boxes and walk you guys through how we assemble the boxes on this table um, to do this whole process. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is basically start with our quad box here. So we need to basically use the punch out holes that you'll find around the outside of the box to punch out the holes for our cable connector and for our half inch odd set. So if you look around the box, you'll find big holes and small holes. The small holes are the half inch, the big holes are for the three quarter inch. We are using all half inch, so we're gonna be using the half inch connector. So I'm gonna punch out this hole right here. Um, well, actually I gotta turn it. I'm gonna punch out this bottom right one here and the top left one here to basically go in with the cable here and out with the half, in, the half inch offset right here. Basically you need something to smack it with. I like to kind of use a crescent wrench, it just seems to work good. So basically just line it up and smack it. And then I uh, go on the other side. This is the one, this is the one I need right there. And then we take our pliers and we basically just twist these off. They break right off and we're good to go. Now you just unscrew the back nut right here and you put it in and then screw the nut in on the inside. All right, so now we're gonna do the basically the metal plate thing that's gonna hold the box onto the truss. So I have the metal plate here and the two screws. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically put this on the back side of the box like this. So we're gonna put the metal clamp in between. We're gonna line this up with the two holes on the box and we're gonna screw those in with these two nuts right here. Tighten these down. All right, so with this box fully assembled, we can move on to the middle box real quick. And uh, basically it's the same sort of process. We take our little thing, we smack out the two ends on both sides, grab our pliers, and twist out the inside piece on both. There we go. And now we can take the two half inch offsets again and we can apply them to both ends of this. Cool, so with our two half inch offsets on there, let's go ahead and let's connect up the hose clamp again on the back of this box. And we're basically gonna be doing that again using these screws right here on the back side. And we're gonna put the hose clamp in between and we are going to mount it up. All right, so both of the boxes are now fully assembled and ready to go. One thing to point out on the hose clamp, you want this to be as close to this side as you possibly can. So when we're putting these, uh, I guess this one's a better one to show, but um, on the side closest to the half inch offset, we want the screw head facing up um, for the hose clamp. So basically the way this is gonna go on is like this to the truss. So we want this here so that we can actually screw it on. So basically, this would go in the same orientation so that the screw head is on that side. So that is how I have it set up. That's how we're basically going to install it onto the truss. So now I'm going to connect it to the pipe and I'll show you guys a little bit of a closer up when we start wiring the outlets in. Okay, so the first step now is to feed in our wire. So Let's go ahead and let's feed in our wire. I like to feed it in from one side, feed it into here, feed it all the way through to the other side. Now I'm gonna pull through a good amount here, right about there, then right about there, and I'm gonna cut this off right here with my side cuts. All right, there we go. I like to just bend it in a little bit so that way the wires are kind of where they're at. And now we can move on to the quad box down here to start fully assembling it. All right, so we are looking at the quad box right now. I got my two outlets here. I got a lot of stuff ready to go. Next thing I'm gonna do, since we have this wire feed, I'm gonna feed this wire in as well. So I'm just gonna put that through our port connection right here, or our cable connection. And I'm gonna feed in a good amount here, very similar to the amount we have on the other end. Okay. That looks good. And now what I'm gonna do is use my utility knife and carefully cut the shielding off of this so that we can um, expose this wire. Or expose the wires inside, better yet. So just very carefully doing this, not putting too much pressure on the wire because I don't wanna cut the other wires. 
go. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna actually just cut this off itself. And now I'm gonna back this out a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna tighten down these screws right here. Not too tight, just tight enough that it's going to be snug. Okay, so now that we have both of these wires ran in, we basically have our wires to start connecting our outlets. We do need wires though to connect these two outlets together and also our ground wires coming off of these so that we can basically put all of our ground wires together into a wire nut. So what I'm gonna do is go to the THHN wire and I'm gonna cut off about six to eight inches to be able to link our cables together as well as a couple pieces of ground wire to run our connections off of these. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll have the cables here in a second. All right, so I have the cables here. I have a black and a white, and uh, I just went and sourced uh, some spare ground wire that I had laying around. This is not shielded, but you don't really need shielded in this situation. So that way we can connect all these. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and use the wire strippers and strip off about a half an inch of shielding on the ends of every single one of these wires. So how you do that, basically you take your wire and um, in this case we are 12 gauge, so we go to the 12th slot. We go down about half an inch and we squeeze down and then you rotate the stripper around a couple times and it will cut that shielding. And then you just pry it out and you can take off the shielding. Do that for all of your wires. All right, so with all of our wire stripped, the first thing I like to do before we start actually connecting up our outlets after all of our wires are stripped is to actually connect our ground wire here to the box. So remember those ground screws? This, this little screw right here, this little green screw, same color as this green right here, indicating that it is a ground. Basically, we screw it into the box in this little raised thing right here. You'll find these in all of the electrical boxes like that, screw it in a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is take this wire right here only cause I don't wanna use the appliance wire. Um, it's just a personal opinion. And I'm going to mark right here and I'm gonna strip off about an inch to wrap that around that screw. Right about there is where it's gonna start. So I'm going to basically take this. I'm going to take my wire strippers, go to my 12 and I'm going to basically cut the, sh the shielding around it. And then I'm gonna go about an inch down the wire, so right about there, and I'm going to strip it here as well. And then I'm going to take a utility knife and cut the shielding in between, very carefully. Then you should be able to just peel off the shielding in between, like so. And now you can take this and wrap it around the ground screw like so, give it a nice wrap, and then screw down your ground screw. Make it nice and tight. Okay, so now we need to move on to our actual outlets themselves. So the first thing that we should notice is that with our box cover right here, the way we're gonna be mounting our outlets is actually into the quad cover. It'll be a little bit different with the single box, but what we're gonna be doing is basically mounting it into the cover using these screws right here, these screw holes, and they come with the screws and nuts to do so. So with the outlet itself, the way it comes, they already have screws in it. We don't need these screws. So what I'm gonna do is take pliers and I'm going to remove those screws like so. The next thing to notice is with the outlets that I bought, they will not fit into this cover. As you see, they're too big. Well, on the back of the outlets, there's these little breaks. I'm not sure if you can see it right there, these little breaks. So what you can do is you can take your pliers right here and you can break those off just with a couple of twists. So basically you go through and you break all these off on both sides. So break all three, the two sides and then the middle one. And now this outlet will fit into our box with no issues. All right, so I'm gonna quickly do that to the other one real quick, removing the screws and breaking those off. So now we are ready to start wiring up our outlet. 
So we have three different colors of wires right here. We have white, black, and green. In the electrical coding world, basically your black wire is going to be called your hot wire. Your white wire is going to be called your neutral and your green is called your ground. If you haven't caught on already. On the back of this outlet right here, and this basically is the same for all outlets. This outlet's nice because they actually worded which side is which, but your silver screw is where your white wires will go, which is indicated right here, white wires. And your gold screw is where it your black wires will go or your hot wires. The green is always your ground. So we need to prep these wires to go into the outlet to basically be able to screw them down. So what I like to do is go ahead on um, our black and our white wires right here is I like to go ahead and I like to turn these a little bit, just twist them up a little bit. That's just my opinion. I like to go through and twist these around a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is basically twist this into a hook. So just like that is what we're going for. Just a little hook on all of them. Again, I'm gonna just go through and I'm gonna twist all these around a few times just to tighten up the wire. And then I'm going to twist it into a little bit of a hook. All right, so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna do that to all of the black and the white wires real quick. Don't forget our little connector wires. So sometimes you can do this by hand too. Uh, you just wanna make sure you don't catch your fingers and uh, prick them. But sometimes you can also just twist them by hand. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start with the first outlet. So the first outlet, let me separate these cables out for you guys so you can see. So we have the wires coming in. This is where our power is coming from. It's gonna to go to the first outlet. It doesn't matter what screw you connect these to on either side. What does matter is you keep the white wires to the silver screws and the black wires to the gold screws. So I'm gonna start with the black wire over here, the first one on this first gold screw. I'm gonna hook it around the screw like so, and then I'm going to screw it tight. I'm gonna do the same thing for the first white wire here. Are good nice and secure all right so now on the green screw here though i need to basically put a ground jumper wire right here um, so i'm going to twist this into a hook real quick and connect it to our ground so all of our grounds are basically going to come together over here like so and we're going to put a ground nut on them just to give you guys a preface for what we're going to be doing here in the future so the ground comes off it like so now we need to put our jumpers that are going to jump to the next outlet so we got our white jumper right here going on the silver screw so i'm going to hook that around and screw it down like so good to go take our black jumper or our hot wire connect it around that screw Screw it down. Now these wires right here will now go to the next outlet in the chain. So let's go ahead and we'll connect this black wire coming from this one. So the black wire will come from here and go to this outlet. So I'm going to connect it here like so. Connect the white wire. All right, so now these two are linked. Now we need to take the wires that are going on to the next outlets in the chain and hook them to this outlet. So that's what we're gonna do now, basically. Let me um, adjust this hook real quick, because it's not correct. Again, connect the white wire to the silver screw and connect our black wire to our gold screw. All right, so lastly, we need to have another ground jumper coming off of that last outlet. So we're gonna twist this into a hook real quick. Connect it up. All right, with all of those wired up, again, white wires to silver screws, black wires to the gold screws, keep them on the same sides, and you will be all good to go. Now with all of our ground wires, we need to basically collect them over into one side together. So this is where some people kind of dif differ on how to do this, how to do this, um, basically how to connect them into the, the wire nut. Uh, the way I do it basically is I bring them all together like so, I toss the wire nut on them, and then I make sure that all the wires are jammed up in there properly, which in this case they were not. And then I like to basically just check and see if any of the wires will come out, which none of them won't. So now we can kind of tuck this wire nut down into the bottom of the box. And we can now move on to putting our top on. So basically putting our outlets into the top. So basically grab the outlets, use a little bit of manipulation some force here and get the outlets lined up into the top box doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to screw them in so with the top cover here they come with the nuts and bolts that we need take our nut our bolt right here put it through the bottom put it in through the hole and then on the back side use the nut to connect it and i just like to use my hands basically to feel it out first and then you can use a straight screwdriver on the top here to tighten it down now you don't want to go all the way tight because you want to get all of your bolts in before you actually tighten them all down. So again, just doing this by hand. And sometimes you drop the nut inside of the case.
All right, so now we're ready to basically put our plate and attach it to the box to finish this box off. So on the sides here, there's two Phillips screws. I take a drill, basically just pull them out real quick. One on the back side. So I'm going to basically now push this down into the box like so and use the screws on the side here to basically connect up our sides. I like to put them in by hand first. That way I know that the threads are going in correctly before I go ahead and use the drill. And that's it. That is all for the first box. Now we can move on to the next one. All right, so before I actually start wiring up this box right here, I like to go ahead and assemble this whole entire upper section. So uh, to do that, we're gonna need our other box right here, the other quad box. For this, we only need to basically knock out the one thing right here at the bottom. We only need one, so we'll knock that out. Use our pliers to pull it out again. Put in our half inch offset. So I like to go ahead and basically do this ground wire right here. So right here is my mark. I'm gonna pull it out a little bit. That way I can actually get to it. And I'm gonna take my wire strippers and do the exact same thing I did on the last box. And that is basically break the wire or cut the wire uh, shielding right here and then cut it off or uh, break the shielding again about an inch later down the wire. So about right there, break that one as well. And then carefully take a utility knife and cut off the shielding in between. Okay, slide it back in a little bit, wrap this around that ground screw down there, give it one nice good loop around it. Might have to loosen up the ground screw just a little bit, might be a little too tight. And then tighten down the ground screw into the box. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and strip off all of the wires just like we did last time. All right, so with that done, we can prep the outlet itself. In this case, we are gonna be using the two screws that are actually on the outlet to screw it into the box. So all I'm gonna be doing is breaking off these ends though so that it'll fit properly into the box. All right, I'm gonna make all of my wires minus my ground wires, basically my black and my whites into hooks real quick. And now we can actually connect up our wires. Again, black wires on the black screws, white wires on the silver screws, or just follow the directions on the back. Lastly, going to connect a ground jumper wire to the outlet real quick. So right here is the ground screw. Connect a ground jumper wire to it. Now we're going to take all of our ground wires and use a wire nut and put them all together, just like we did last time. All right, that's all good to go. We can now push all this down into the box and connect our screws into the box itself. So both these go on either side. Phillips screwdriver, start screwing them in. And then for me, because these are such big screws, I like to speed up the process. And lastly, we take the cover and we screw it onto the outlet itself. And the center box is done and ready. Whoops. Center box is all good and ready to go. Let's now move on to the last one and we should be done. All right, at this point, you've pretty much seen how I wire up all these. So I'm going to just go ahead. I'm gonna break off all these. I'm gonna strip my wires. I'm gonna get my connector wires. Enjoy the time lapse as I put basically this exact same as the bottom one, except for the fact that all we have to do is link to this one. There's no output. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do this one, enjoy the time lapse, and I'll catch you guys when it's all done. All right, so with our outlet assembly completely done, now we need to plug it in and make sure we did it correctly. And the way you know that is with an outlet tester like this right here. So this right here is an outlet tester and basically you plug it into an outlet and based on these three LEDs um, and this code right here, it'll tell you if you wired it correctly or it'll tell you what is wrong. 
So uh, what we're looking for is basically these two yellow lights to be on. That means it's correct. If you have just the middle yellow light on, it is an open ground, so your ground is not connected. This one basically means that your neutral wire is not connected. This one means uh, no lights. You don't have a hot wire connected. Your hot and your ground are reversed. If you get the red and the yellow, that is very bad. And your hot and your neutral are reversed if you get this series of lights, which is also very bad. So we're going to plug it in, and we're basically going to plug this into all of our outlets and make sure that we have a correct wire job. All right, so I plugged it in over there and let's take the outlet tester real quick here. That one is correct. Correct. We don't really have to do all of them, but correct, correct, correct. Good to go. 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 And good to go. We are all Good to go. All right, so now I'm gonna take the full assembly here and I'm going to slide it into the truss. All right, so this is the part where we're gonna be taking our hose clamps and connecting it to the truss itself. So what we're gonna to have to do is loosen that hose clamp, basically loosen it completely, wrap it around the truss and then tighten it back down and we're gonna do it for all three of these. Now, to make life quicker, uh, I basically have the adapter hooked up here to a drill to basically be able to unscrew and rescrew those together a lot quicker than if you were doing it by hand. So I'm gonna get started on that, starting with the top and working to the middle and then the bottom. All right, so with the boxes all secure and ready to go, boxes are mounted in place, they're not going anywhere. We're pretty much done, uh, basically. Um, last things we need to do here is these set screws right here on the offset connectors. You need to go through and you need to tighten all these, which I'm gonna do right now. This one's actually already tight. But yes, these uh, offset screws right here on all the pipes, you wanna make sure that they are all basically tightened down so that way your pipe is not going to go anywhere in terms of uh, basically sliding out of the offset connector. So, here all those down real quick. And then the last step here is optional. Optional, yeah. Now the last step here, this is optional, but we have two more hose clamps and you can basically place them um, in the center of both these pipes. So you put one here and put one here. I'm gonna do that real quick. And then lastly, we're going to trim the hose clamps so there's not a lot of excess. Um, and that's pretty easy to do with a pair of side cuts. So I'm gonna do that now and then we will go ahead and trim them and we will be good to go. All right, so now to trim these, it's very easy. All you do is take a pair of side cuts. Um, now this is optional. You can either cut them off really close to where the screw is itself or you can leave some space. The good part about leaving some space is that you can take these off and you can reuse them later on. If you cut them off really close, basically you're not gonna be able to reuse this if you wanna take the pipe off down the road. So keep that in mind. Hose clamps are pretty cheap. They're about a dollar, dollar fifty a piece. So it's not that expensive if you have to go buy new ones. Although I'm going to cut them off with a little bit of slack just because I do want to possibly change this up in the future. So again, you just basically clamp down and you give it basically a twist back and forth and it will break off like so. Then you just take your end here and push that down so it's not sticking up and trying to hit somebody. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do that for the rest of them and then we will finish this up. All right, last thing here with this cord, I wanna go ahead and put a Velcro tie on it. That way it's not just a big loose cord going everywhere. And that way I can basically roll this up, Velcro tie it, and put it in the inside of the truss. That way it's not uh, dragging on the ground going to an event. But wind that up real quick, get the Velcro strap around it, put it up in, boom. Alrighty guys, that's all for this video on how to add electrical outlets to your truss. Some additional points I wanted to make real quick. I used hose clamps and I used it in a way that worked to be able to uh, basically work for the code by mounting the boxes to the truss. I do know that I've seen it before where people actually will take the boxes and then get them tack welded into the truss. Very much a permanent installation when you go that route. 
um, but that is another option instead of using hose clamps and it does look a lot uh, cleaner because they're basically just tack welded in there. Um, that is an option that you can do down the line if you want to. I definitely might do that down the line. I kind of like being able to use the hose clamps though to just kind of feel it out for the events in the future. Basically leave it like this and then as we go and do events, see if this is something that's working. If it is working and I don't see that we need to take this out ever, maybe I'll go ahead and tack weld them in, but that is an option. One additional thing that I do want to mention is that when you do this, there is one downside and that is that you can no longer clamp anything to that side of the truss. So basically the pole that you decided to clamp onto, in the case this one right back here, um, you can no longer put an O-clamp around that. Now, in most cases, that's not a big issue, especially for totems, because most of the time with totems, all we're doing is putting a mover on top, maybe clamping one or two lights on the side. We're not using all four sides, so it's not normally a big issue, especially with like TVs, you're just using the front too, and if the outlet's on the back, you're good to go. And even in the case of like the trussing, if you're running it up vertically, like um, basically above the stage or something like that, Normally, you're only going to be using the bottom two to hang stuff downwards. Sometimes you put one on top, but normally you can live with only having one of the poles not being usable. So that is just something to consider with doing this modification. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to put electrical conduit and outlets into your trussing. Again, this is the second time filming this, so this is now like hour six worth of basically trying to make this video so if you guys would greatly help me out and slap a big like on this video i'd greatly appreciate it as well as you can check out all of the clothing support me with the dj life clothing the masks are coming soon i think I, at this point i should have an announcement date for when the masks are going to go on sale but anyways don't forget to hit that subscribe button make sure you turn on post notifications that way you know every time i do a live stream djing i've been doing it like once a week now um, and if you don't have your post notifications turned on, you don't know when I'm going to go live because I haven't been posting them after the fact. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you hit that post notifications, make sure you slap a like and leave down in the comment section down below what you guys thought of this video. Hit me up on Instagram and like always, my name is Deidre Webb. Keep the record spinning and I will see you guys next time. Peace.